And now joining me, we have Jim Hamilton, and he is the director of the Watauga County Cooperative Extension. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thanks, Danielle. Appreciate the invite. Absolutely. Now, for any of our viewers who are not familiar with the Cooperative Extension, can you tell us a little bit about it and what you guys do here in the high country? Uh, basically, we're the, we're the outreach arm uh, of NC State University, part of the land-grant uh, university system. Um, this year, Cooperative Extension actually celebrates its 100-year anniversary. Wow. Uh, Cooperative Extension started in, in 1914. Uh, the Smith-Lever Act put us into, into action, and we have offices in each of the uh, 100 counties in North Carolina and at the, um, at the Koala Boundary with the Eastern Band of Cherokee. So, we're, uh, we're, we're, uh, we're a big organization, and most people don't realize that we're actually part of the uh, land-grant university system. Very cool. Yes, I had no idea that there were so many different locations yeah. throughout the state. And there's 100, uh, 100, 100 offices in, uh, in here in Watauga County. Um, we have a, a staff that um, are, are you know, based in the county and have program areas meant to address um, you know, the issues related to uh, ag and youth development and, uh, and nutrition that we... Um, uh, you know, that, that are relevant to Watauga County. And we've got a great partnership with the county. Um, uh, each of the counties uh, support their extension offices in, in a variety of different ways. We've got strong support from Watauga County. Fantastic. So you're doing a lot of work with the county and the town of Boone and... Yes, yes, definitely. Staying very involved, it sounds definitely, like. Definitely, <laughs> definitely. And, and, you know, agriculture is, is, is still big. Uh, it's a, um, one of the, uh, uh, you know, big economic drivers here in the county. And we basically take, you know, as, as uh, the extension organization, we're taking the most relevant and current research coming out of the university systems and bringing it out to the people, out to, out to the farmers. Um, we've got a network of specialists at uh, North Carolina State University and North Carolina A&T State University that our agents can call on whenever there's, you know, pest issues or new crops that folks are interested in getting into or new, uh, new practices. Um, so, uh, so that's what, that's what we do. We take, we take what's being, you know, generated, uh, through research and bring it out to the people. Fantastic. So how does the community kind of get involved with you guys? Uh, pretty much, you, you know, um, you, you give us a call. Uh, it depends on, 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 on what you're in, you know, uh, what kind of, what questions you have about, about anything really home, lawn, nutrition. I mean, we've, we have folks bring in, strange stuff in mason jars that they found in the house for us to identify <laughs> you know i had a, a baby copperhead in a jar one time we've had Oof. bed bugs brought in we we get a lot of a, a lot of stuff so you guys are kind of a one-stop shop for information about but, yes anything. yeah definitely Fantastic. Now, what are some of the specific programs and projects that you guys have going on? Uh, well, we have uh, uh, agriculture is probably one of our, our uh, I guess, the main focus areas and the focus area and program area that um, that people are most familiar with. Um, we have a livestock agent, uh, Eddie Labus, who's uh, very, uh, very hands on and does a great job working with the uh, with the cattle industry. Uh, the um, you know cattle industry here in the county you know we've got a herd, a you know, total herd size of around probably 10,000 head of cattle that you know spread out. Uh, you know, all over the county, folks don't realize that, you know, that's a, a pretty big um, ag industry here. Um, we have a uh, family and consumer science agent, Margie Mancher, who, um, you know, she's got a column in the Mountain Times, and she, uh, she's really our kind of local food person. Um, when folks have, have questions or are interested in, uh, you know, uh, producing local food or how to cook local food, she, um, she does a lot of programs in those areas. Uh, Karee Mackey is our 4-H and youth development um, agent, and she works, uh, she does after school programs, does you know, the 4-H programs in the summer. Uh, we've got Wendy Pataperste, she's our natural resource, water resource agent, and you know, since Watauga is a headwaters county, uh, water resources are, are, are really important, and she uh, does all kinds of trainings and outdoor activities um, you know, in the schools and in the community, uh, water conservation and stream enhancement. Um, We've got, you know, we, we, we've got a, a, a full office of folks. I'm, we, we lost our, uh, our, uh, our Christmas tree agent, our horticulture agent, in, uh, last December. And I was formerly the, the Christmas tree agent then, so I'm kind of filling uh, roles as director and in in, in answering tree questions as, as well there. So we, um, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a great place to work because there's something new happening every day in the community and related to ag. 
Right. Very neat. Well, we will go ahead now and talk about the Christmas Tree sure. Association. I think this sounds like such a neat thing. Everybody loves Christmas <laughs> trees. We're in a great area yeah. to get some Christmas trees, but that's really kind of a month of December, maybe month of November kind of thing. So what's going on with the association for the rest of the year? Uh, well, that's the thing. You know, people think of Christmas trees, just you, you talk to a Christmas tree farmer and they're, they're thinking Christmas all year, all year long. They're right. thinking about, you know, producing those trees, high quality trees. It, it, uh, uh, Christmas tree production does take a lot of work, a lot more work than, than, uh, than a lot of folks realize. Um, but it's a, it's a, still a big industry here in Western North Carolina. Um, you know, and the Christmas tree that everybody sees, you know, on the hillsides is, is, is Fraser fir. And, you know, Fraser fir is, uh, native to some of the highest peaks, um, in North Carolina and, and Virginia and a little bit in, into Tennessee. And, um, you know, it's a, it's a seven to 10 year crop. So, um, you know, it takes a lot of management throughout the year. Um, uh, fertility, managing the, you, know, you manage the soil, you manage the growth of the plant uh, around July. Uh, you'll see crews out shearing the trees using these, you know, big, long, really sharp butter knives. That's what they look <laughs> like. They're, they're called shearing knives and they're about yay long and uh, really lightweight and sharp. Uh, and then, um, you know, in the fall, growers will start tagging their trees, getting ready for some of the wholesale markets, and then, uh, you know, getting their uh, uh, their farms ready for for choose and cut. Um, we're you know, Watauga County is is uh, you know we're, we're consider ourselves the choose and cut capital of uh, uh, of, of North Carolina. We have a uh, um, around 30, uh, 30, 31 members of the association of the uh, Christmas Tree Association that do choose and cut and participate in a lot of the choose and cut marketing that goes on, um, you know, with the hotels and the shopping and restaurants that we have, you know, here in Boone, it really lends itself to, to being a big choose and cut destination. Absolutely. Now, what is kind of the difference in these 31 or so different options? Is there a lot of difference? Is one uh, there, there is there, you know, um, some of the farms uh, run the whole gamut. They'll have, uh, you know, um, uh, a pet, you know, kind of petting zoos or animals, farm animals that kids can see, uh, you know, sleigh rides, hot chocolate, a Christmas shop where they sell everything from wreaths to ornaments to, uh, to, to local goods. Um, you know, some do hay rides, uh, you know, bonfires or, you know, bonfires around the, you know, around the, the main barn. Um, and some are, you know, are, are pretty basic. You know, you go out and they have somebody there to help you, help you pick your tree and cut your tree and put it on your truck and in or car and that's it but um yeah they've had a, a really good year this year the weather cooperated um even though it was you know we had a you know a late thanksgiving which kind of shortened the, right. the christmas tree season a little bit for the for the choosing cutters but from the the growers that i've spoken with they they all had a, had a really good year Fantastic. Now, how is this weather that we're having right now? How is that <laughs> affecting them? Obviously, this is the kind oh, of Oh, they're on vacation. They're gone. They're out okay. of here. No, no, no. They, uh, <laughs> but a lot of really, the, the harvest season really actually, you know, folks don't realize, some folks start cutting their trees for wholesale shipments um, the last week of October. Okay. So last week of October, really the first week of November, the growers really get into the, into the harvest and the chainsaws run, you know, 12, 14 hours a day. Um, wow. until probably the first week of, of December when things are, are trailing off. And then, uh, you know, I know uh, some growers that, you know, after the season's over, you know, they go to, they, they, they take a break. They obviously take a, a well-deserved break because it's, it's a lot of hard work. Harvest is, um, harvest is, is, is pretty tough work. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, any idea how many trees go out of the high country every year? So we usually do a survey. We, uh, Extension sends a, um, a survey to the growers who participated in kind of the choose and cut uh, marketing through the association. Um, you know, last year uh, we had reported roughly around 15,000 total trees just from those, you know, just from those growers um, who, who reported. Um, most of them do share their, you know, share their numbers. We, we, um, we are supported with funds from the uh, from the TDA, the Tourism Development Authority, which help us in the marketing, and they want to see you know how the marketing efforts are um, right. you know improving sales, and um, you know it was interesting in in 08 when the uh, when the recession hit, uh, the growers felt a, a big hit too. Um, folks you know tightened up their belts and their wallets and. And you know, didn't drive you know four hours to spend a couple nights here in the mountains and get a tree. It was um, right. it really impacted the the, the industry. Um, but you know, we've seen um, we've seen a steady increase over the last few years of of, of tree sales. 
uh, especially with with the uh, with the choose and cut markets. Um, mm -hmm. Wholesale, the wholesale industry is a, a different animal. It's gotten um, you're seeing fewer growers, but larger scale growers. There's still probably there's some growers putting close to a, a million seedlings in the ground um, in some parts of the state. So wow, it's yeah, it's a big big industry. Definitely. And I think it's so neat to actually come up to the mountains and kind of cut down your own tree or have someone cut it yeah. down. But to be right there and be a part of that and have that whole experience as opposed to maybe just going to the grocery store to pick one up. It's, it's a great oh, experience. Oh, yeah. That's right. You know, we t one of the plugs from um, that we borrowed from one of our uh, uh, one of the sp uh, sponsors of the brochure that we had said, uh, you know, Christmas magic is, is found on the farm, not in the parking lot. Exactly. So that's we're plugging the industry big time for that. Exactly. Very, very neat. And I'm glad the weather did cooperate this year. Lately, it not did. So you great. know, and the rains, <laughs> the rains we had in the in the in the summer, and the cool weather, the cool summer we had was actually great for Fraser mm -hmm. Fraser fir. I mean, normally Perfect. that tree in its native range is is between you know 4,200 to to 5,000 feet. So, the cooler the better. Um, the trees fare worse during during hot dry weather with with pests and bugs and and and. In, in other issues but uh but this summer as much as we didn't like the you know all the rain that we got that the, you know the trees uh, tr trees enjoyed it perfect now what would you say are some of the benefits of being a part of the christmas tree association for these christmas tree farmers um well the christmas tree the Watara we'll christmas tree association um uh, offers uh educational programs um they have a summer a summer meeting a summer technical meeting and um, extension agents and other folks who work with the uh, industry, some of the in, um, industry uh, uh, Christmas trees support industries, um, you know, do come and provide presentations and give technical information. Um, the marketing that uh, that the association is able to, uh, the marketing dollars they're able to secure through uh, through grant funding and through sponsorships allows us to market. We really market for for anybody doing Christmas trees here in the high country and really, really um, encourage folks that are, uh, that throw up a sign around, you know, around Thanksgiving for, to, uh, you know, to sell their trees that they, that they support the association because they're benefiting from the, uh, you know, from the marketing that, that the association um, uh, does do. Right. Very we, uh, right. yeah, we, we put an ad um, in actually the U.S. Airways, um, uh, you know, flight magazine in right. July to get folks kind of thinking about, you know, making their holiday plans to come up to the mountains, and you know, ads ads cost money, and so uh, by supporting the association, you're supporting you know the marketing um, efforts. Uh, you're supporting kind of the um, you know uh, an, an organization that also supports I extension. I mean, we uh, you know, extension is very involved uh, with growers on a on a one to one basis. I mean, we go out and make field visits and help them you know scout for pests and provide recommendations on on uh, soil fertility and on, you know, potential pesticide treatments and how to integrate their pest management to, you know, not only have, uh, have great looking trees, but also, in, you know, environmentally friendly farms. Absolutely. Well, it sounds like a great association, a very neat thing. Yeah. Christmas preparation goes on all year long. That's the big Definitely. secret here. Well, thank you so much for talking with us. Today. Yeah, you're welcome, Danielle, anytime. Absolutely. And we'll be back in just a moment with more of the Mountain Television Network.